The Vector Warp feature in Affinity Designer lets you non-destructively warp or distort your vector curves or text elements within your design. We also have a range of useful presets with this feature as well, making it a really powerful tool. So I'm going to start off by working on this group of thin rectangles I've organized together inside this ellipse and show you how you can instantly start to warp these using a new warp group. So once you have the correct layer selected, then you can head over to the Layers panel and click on the new icon we have here, which will show you some presets you can choose from, each of which has its own use cases and individual benefits. Alternatively, you can head over to Layer and Warp Group or use the handy keyboard shortcut Option Command G on Mac or Alt Control G on Windows. This also creates a mesh group by default as well, but we could easily change this to one of the other presets by referring to the context toolbar. Now we can make our selection from the drop down box, reset our current warp settings, or change some of the other options, which I'll mention in a moment. Let's start by simply interacting with these handles and nodes we have over the top of our design. You can easily see how quickly I can start to manipulate the lines to create something more interesting but also how smoothly the lines are being displayed while I'm doing it too. And you can see that the lines will start to bunch together in a really complex way as we gradually make them more and more distorted. This is looking quite nicely warped now, but I can compare it to my previous simple line setup by utilizing the mute mesh option we have in the context toolbar as well. Or we might use the handy X-ray view mode via the keyboard shortcut Command Y on Mac or Control Y on Windows which also allows us to view the rest of our document in this same preview mode too. The Mute Mesh option in particular is a great way to go back and make changes to the layout without your warp being applied and can be really beneficial when comparing designs in a before and after type of situation. And a key thing to mention here is the fact that we don't need to flatten or convert our warp lines to curves unless we choose to. So at this stage we can easily go back and forth with our unwarped version in a truly non-destructive way, which is especially useful when you're experimenting during the design process. I'm happy with how this is looking though, so let's move on to one of our lettering examples. I have this warped text here, so let's make it look a little more fitting. This time let's choose quad instead of the default mesh, and then start to mess around with the text. As we interact with the corner nodes and the rest of the boundaries, you can see that where the mesh option was focusing more on the internal area, quad is letting us warp the overall shape instead. However, we can also add additional warp targets to this by simply clicking on the path, which then gives us more nodes and handles to work with, giving us more control over the design. If we click in one of the empty spaces, we can also then move whole segments around. Or by clicking again, we can create even more warp targets, so it really is hugely flexible and lets you work in your own preferred way. I'm happy with how this has turned out though, so I'll show you the next section I want to apply a similar effect to. This time, if we use one of the other presets from the list, we can see our design transforms instantly. For example, if we use fisheye and then change the value to a much lower amount in the context toolbar, we get this great depth effect. But the one I want to use this time is twist, which I think is a particularly effective preset. Now, when we change the value percentage, the middle section is twisting either to the left or right. And once I have a rough placement that I like, I can go in further and tweak the handles to suit my preference. This is a good time to show you that changing the junction handles from smooth to sharp can also really help to give a more exaggerated effect. So it's worth experimenting with all of these settings to see what works best for you. Now we have our two text elements, I'm going to copy them onto the first cover design I was working on using Command C on Mac or Control C on Windows to copy and Command V on Mac or Control V on Windows to paste. I'll also reposition them slightly with the Move tool and change the colour to white using the colour panel as well. And then I'll copy this whole layer over to my last artboard. And here I have prepared an advert for this vinyl cover which we've just put together but we'll need to use the Perspective Warp feature to get it to sit properly in our mock-up. So I'm going to make sure my artwork layer is roughly in place and then I can go ahead and add my warp group and select perspective. This is similar to the way that quad works but it allows us to create more depth in our warps and helps us make this vinyl cover sit more realistically in the image. By moving the nodes we can simply position them in the four corners of the vinyl cover and the warp group will display in a way that works best. And one last step I'd like to take is by using the transparency tool to just blend our layer onto the image below. We can fade it slightly on the right hand side just to try and add a bit more realism to this composition. 
So there we have our design in place, and it's worth highlighting the fact that we've used a perspective warp on top of a layer that actually contained three other editable warp groups. So adding multiple warps together can really help you to achieve some interesting and creative results. So these just help to show you that there are a huge amount of design use cases with this tool. And I hope you can take some inspiration from the samples we've looked at and enjoy experimenting with it yourself. Thank you for watching this video and I'll see you in the next one.